Just a couple months ago, picking which VR headset is right for you in the $400 price range was pretty easy. If you wanted to play VR on a PC, you bought an Oculus Rift S. And if you don't have a PC at all, then the Quest was the best option for you. Well, as we all know, the Quest Link beta just released this past week, and now that decision as to which VR headset you should buy from Oculus isn't so cut and dry. Today, I'm going to compare the two head to head and hopefully provide you with a clear answer to that question. Just which one should you get? Alright, so I have spent the past week really trying to spend as much time as possible with the Quest and Rift S side by side, so I can give a fair comparison now that the rosy tinted glasses are off regarding the Quest Link update. So first, what I'm going to do is compare the actual specifications and physical aspects of the headsets, and then I'll go into use cases regarding why you should buy one over the other. So I'll start with the Rift S. First thing you should know is that it's a PC-only headset. Without a computer providing it with power and data, it's just a lifeless chunk of plastic. In terms of the displays, you get a single LCD panel at 2560 by 1440 or 1280 by 1440 per eye, and the refresh rate is at 80 hertz. The single display means that you do not have a mechanical IPD or interpupillary distance adjustment. It's all done with software, which does mean that the Rift S may not work for everyone's eyes. You also have a focal length adjustment, which will grant the S about 115 degrees field of view. For audio, you get a headstrap audio speaker similar to the Quest that's maybe just a little louder, but but for real immersion, you're going to want to use headphones using the 3.5mm headphone jack. And regarding the overall build, you've got a Halo headstrap design with generally comfortable foam around all areas of the headset that actually touch your head. And this is one area that I actually like about the Rift S. It's just a little plasticky and maybe a little cheap feeling. Next, let's get into the Quest. Whereas the Rift S is of course a PC-only device, the Quest rocks a Snapdragon 835 mobile processor, and all of the other bits and pieces needed to run some pretty good VR experiences without a computer at all. Of course, graphics quality suffers, and the number of actual games available is pretty limited, but wireless VR is still pretty badass, not gonna lie. The displays on the Quest are two 1440 by 1600 panels at 72 hertz, and the dual displays does in fact mean that you get a manual IPD adjustment using the slider. Now regarding the FOV, so unlike the Rift S, the Quest's official FOV isn't really listed anywhere, but outlets like Road to VR state the Quest is equal to the original Oculus Rift, and the Rift S is slightly larger than the original Rift, which I would agree with. I see in some places like Reddit that people claim the Quest to have a large increase of FOV over the Rift S, but it very well could be a mix of my personal IPD and how I have the eye relief slider set up on my Rift S, but I definitely don't see the Quest having a larger FOV, at least not in any super noticeable increments. I even have the slim VR cover facial interface on. The audio is nearly the same setup as the Rift S, head strap audio with just a little less oomph. Still going to need headphones for the true immersion. And my biggest gripe is with the actual head strap solution used here. The overall build quality feels nicer and less plasticky than the Rift S, but I seriously can't talk about the build of this headset without mentioning that I don't really like the comfort of the stock Quest. If I don't have a battery pack on the back of the headset to counterbalance the front heaviness, or a deluxe audio strap, which I've added and taken off multiple times now, there is no way that I could use my Quest for the same amount of time that I use my Index or Rift S. I have said it before, and I'll say it again, playing VR games on my PC is a long form activity. Shoot, even a single stream, which I do multiple times a week, lasts anywhere from 4-5 to five hours, and that's not even including the time that I play when I'm not live. I know that there are going to be people that say comfort is a complete non-issue, and the quest is perfectly fine as is, but no, not for me. The thing is front heavy, and it makes sense. You have way more hardware sitting in the front of the headset, and less support on the back of the headset. Put the two together and four hours in VR and yeah, it leaves me with uncomfortable pressure points both on my forehead and on the back of my head. So your options are a VR cover back foam pad, recentering the weight using a battery bank on the back of the headset as many people have done, or spending around $100 on an HTC Vive Deluxe Audio Strap, which I almost consider a must have anyways. With the Deluxe Audio Strap, you no longer have crappy head strap audio and the comfort is significantly improved, but now your $400 Quest just became a $500 Quest, which is all part of the equation regarding this purchase decision. I'll also mention that the Quest is getting features like hand tracking in the future, but trust me, if the actual update is anything like the demo I tried at OC6, this feature is more of a novelty update that's really cool rather than something that will be widely implemented among games that aren't built primarily with the hand tracking features in mind. 
Now let's talk about actually playing the quest in Rift S on a PC. We can talk numbers all day, but what really matters is how well they play. And well, I gotta say, they're pretty close. I think a lot of what matters in this section is more about what's important to you and what you're willing to give up for other features. Even though the quest technically has a higher resolution per eye on its display, there is more screen door effect than the Rift S due to the panels having a lower pixel density, and yes, it is noticeable especially side by side with the actual headset on, not just looking at through the lens videos. However, the quest does have a better color balance due to the same properties of display technology. The Rift S is an LCD, the Quest is an OLED. Blacks will look blacker on an OLED and you'll get more grays on an LCD. This is not something that really bothers me personally though. It seems everyone has a different opinion on this and well, my opinion is that the Rift S just flat out looks better. Everything is sharper and I notice far less screen door effect. Even with the higher resolution, there are definitely times that I could see individual pixels on the Quest and for me, that breaks immersion like no other. It's a give and take depending on what you like in a display, but I can't get used to seeing pixels. I can, however, get used to the color balance of an entire display. So for me, the Rift S just looks better and that's not even taking into account the compression used on the Quest. So let's just talk about this for a second. The Rift S uses one USB 3.0 and a display port. The Quest transfers a similar image with just one single USB 3. In order to crunch all that data needed to provide you with that image, as well as your computer with the input information from the Quest, that image has to be compressed. Now, Oculus has done some magic with compression technology and it all comes out looking pretty good. Very basically, what they've done is decrease the quality of the image on the periphery and maintain as much as possible in the center of your display, which is where you'll be looking most of the time. Now, I'm not gonna say that this isn't noticeable, it definitely is. However, unless you have something to directly compare the visuals to, like another headset for example, playing PC games on the Quest is pretty darn good. Is it as good as the the Rift S? No, of course not. The Rift S has a sole purpose of playing PC VR games, and that's it. The Quest, on the other hand, is a standalone headset with the bonus feature of being able to play PC VR games. What is impressive about the whole Quest package, though, is how close it gets to a Rift S in terms of PC VR performance. If a total VR newbie tried both, I bet they wouldn't even be able to spot a gigantic difference between the two, but likely they still would notice a difference. Another downside of the Quest Link is that there is some added latency with controller input. I wish that this wasn't a fact, but at this point in time, it is. It's very slight, but it's there, and switching between the Rift S and Quest, you have this feeling like something is slightly off. Of course, the Quest Link is still in beta, and Oculus has some very good software engineers, and this should improve over time, but at this current state, expect more latency regarding controller input while using the Quest Link versus traditional PC VR. Audio is basically the same between both headsets. Just use headphones for full immersion or if you're in a loud space. The deluxe audio strap is actually an option for both of them, but I'd really only consider it a must-have on the Quest. Also, speaking of software, the tracking quality is pretty fantastic on both headsets considering all of the hate that inside-out tracking got, or at least what it did get in the past. If your lighting is decent, you can expect some pretty consistent tracking quality with minimal dead spots, besides directly on top of your head with the Quest and directly behind your back with both headsets. So now, finally, which one is right for you? I'm going to give a few use cases and I think that almost everyone should fit somewhere between here because there are far too many questions for me to ask you when you ask me, should I get a Rift S or a Quest? Situation number one, you have a VR ready PC and you plan on playing PC VR games primarily. You have no interest in mobile VR or taking VR with you places very often. You also fit in this category if you wanna play games competitively or really wanna take something like Beat Saber seriously. Easy, just get a Rift S. It does PC VR better, has less controller input latency, it's more comfortable for long play sessions, and it's actually cheaper with Black Friday sales. And you don't need accessories like a deluxe audio strap to make it more comfortable. Situation number two. You want VR now. You don't have a VR ready PC, or you're currently building one or waiting on an upgrade that you need. Or maybe you don't even care for PC related content and just want to be in VR in general. Well, obviously get the Quest. You have an amazing opportunity to play some quality VR while saving for your PC. And if this is your first foray into virtual reality, I guarantee that the Quest will knock your socks off. Even without a PC, there are some really good games on the platform. Situation number three, you're upgrading from an original Oculus Rift CV1. So you obviously enjoy PC VR content. Personally, either keep your CV1 and save for a big upgrade like the Index or go with the Rift S. I get mega CV1 vibes while playing 
working with the Quest Link, and I don't feel like it's enough of a graphical comfort tracking or audio upgrade to warrant swapping out your trusty CV1. And situation number four, you travel a lot or this is your secondary headset. So if you already own a Vive Pro or Pimax or Index, or you travel a lot and like to bring VR with you, or maybe you just like to show people VR in the comfort of their own homes, get a Quest. Laptop plus Quest is an amazing combo actually. You have full PC VR at your fingertips, more mobile and easier to set up than ever, and even without a PC you have a perfectly functional standalone headset. If you are looking at a Quest and already own a superior headset, it's not a bad option for just bringing it over people's houses or having VR on the go. And that's my main use case. It's my VR on the go, and it fits that use case beautifully. So this is kind of a long form video. Just when it comes to how many times this question has been asked, I wanted to be clear but also fill in all the gaps. Really get people an understanding of which is which. There is no easy answer because there's just so many different situations as to what people like. I probably left some stuff out, but in general I just hope that this helps as many people as possible with the decision. Both are solid headsets and you'll enjoy either one. It's just a matter of figuring out whether you want the jack of all trades, master of none, or a device that just does one thing really well. Coming soon, I will be doing a complete buyer's guide for the Quest, Rift S, Cosmos, Index, and OG Vive, so if you are interested in any of the other ones in a single comprehensive video, just stick around for the channel. After using the Quest Link, I do get some vibes like the Quest is really the continuation of the CV1, and the Rift S was released to fill in the gap and compete with the Index and Cosmos until Quest Link could be released. But that still doesn't detract from either one fulfilling a needed space in the VR hardware landscape. It's just finding out which one, if either, is right for you. If you have tried both, what's your opinion on the LCD versus OLED debate? I know I'm opening up a whole new can of worms here with this thing, but I do feel pretty strongly about my personal likings of LCD panels, and that's a big debate regarding which headset you should get, to be honest. Alright, well thank you to everyone that you see on screen for being an amazing Patreon supporter. I couldn't be doing any of this without you. I hope that you enjoyed, don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.